students to the course on mechanical vibrations welcome students to the course on mechanical vibrations we were discussing the concepts from unit number 3 which is forced vibrations and today we are going to discuss about what are the different characteristics associated in forced vibrations so as you can see in the figure this is a response due to the base motion and we are assuming that the response is harmonic so in this case the excitation is provided by the imposed harmonic motion of the supporting base so you can see here we are having a mass we are having a spring and we are having a damper and together it is going to have the excitation so the displacement of the base about a neutral position is denoted by y which is function of time and the response of the mass from its static equilibrium position is represented by x which is again a function of time so you can see here the mass is having two displacements one is x and one is y now the spring which is attached to the mass is also going to experience two different displacement one is attached to the mass which is having displacement as x and the other displacement y which is attached to the frame so at any time the length of the spring is x minus y and the relative velocity between the two ends of the damper is x dot minus y dot so the equation of motion becomes mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx minus y is equal to zero and we can assume the y displacement of the base as harmonic which can be written as capital y into sin omega t if we are putting this into the value of y and y dot we'll get the final equation as mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to cy dot plus ky so y dot is nothing but differentiation of y so we get c omega y cos omega t plus k into capital y sin omega t so the solution for this we can assume that as a into sin omega t minus alpha so where omega is the frequency of excitation and alpha is the angle of lag where a is equal to y capital y into under root k square plus c, c omega square and alpha is equal to a tan of minus c omega upon k so the applied displacement has the same effect of applying a harmonic force of the magnitude a to the mass now if we are going for the particular solution of it it will be equal to capital y into under root of k square plus c omega square upon under root of k minus m omega square whole bracket square plus c omega bracket square into sin of omega t minus phi 1 minus alpha where alpha is a tan minus c omega upon k and phi 1 is equal to a tan c omega upon k minus m omega square so the solution can be again simplified as xp is equal to capital x sin omega t minus phi this we have seen in the last lecture also and we can write down x by y as under root of k square plus c omega square upon k minus m omega square bracket square plus c omega bracket square now we can have a non dimensional form of this also and we can have the equation as 1 plus 2 zeta r bracket square upon 1 minus r square whole bracket square plus 2 zeta r whole bracket square raised to 1 by 2 and this equation of x by y is known as displacement transmissibility and we can get the value of phi as a tan m c omega square upon k into k minus m omega square plus c omega square is equal to a tan into 2 zeta r cube upon 1 plus 4 zeta square minus 1 into r square where r is nothing but the frequency ratio omega 1 by omega n if i are drawing the graph for this these are the frequency response curves for various values of omega by omega in varying from 0 to 
1, 2, 3, 4. And on to the y-axis, we are having displacement transmissibility that is x by y. So, students are requested to have a close look onto both the graphs. So, the first graph is for frequency response curves of frequency ratio that is omega by omega n versus displacement transmissibility that is x by y. And the second graph is related to the again frequency ratio and onto the y-axis we are having phase angle. So, students can pause for some time and have a look over these graphs. So, how the values of zeta are varying and how the response amplitudes of the vibratory systems are also varying. So, now let us discuss one by one what are the characteristics of these graphs. So, the characteristics of displacement transmissibility trans characteristics of the displacement transmissibility graph are as follows. The transmissibility is equal to 1, you can see here 1, when value of omega by omega n is equal to 0 and it is close to 1 when r is too small. Then the next is for undamped system that is zeta is equal to 0, we will have transmissibility is equal to infinity when r is equal to 1, you can see here. So, this is r is equal to 1 and we are having transmissibility is infinite, the curve is not closed. Now, as we are going to increase the amount of damping, the amplitude becomes finite. So, up to what value it becomes finite, that is r is equal, r is greater than root 2, then the transmissibility ratio is lesser than 1. And when r is equal to root 2, again the transmissibility is equal to 1, you can see it here. So, this is r is equal to root 2 and at that time we are having transmissibility is equal to 1. So, for r greater than root 2, it is inversely proportional to the value of zeta, the transmissibility is inversely proportional to the value of zeta, whereas when r is greater than root 2, you can see in the graphs the transmissibility is proportional to zeta. So, as you increase the value of damping, the transmissibility is going to increase. So, these are the some of the characteristics what are important from the post vibrationary characteristics for the displacement transmissibility. The next thing is about the transmitted force. Again, how much amount of force is transmitted to the ground if a system is vibrating, we need to calculate. So, we are assuming that the force transmitted to the base support caused by the reaction of the spring and damper. So, the force F which is transmitted is equal to K into bracket X minus Y plus C into bracket X dot minus Y dot is equal to minus MX double dot. And if you are assuming the steady state solution X of P which is equal to X sin omega T minus phi the f can be rewritten as f is equal to minus m omega square x sin omega t minus phi which is equal to f t into sin omega t minus phi. And if you are taking the ratio as f t by k y, we will get it as r square into bracket 1 plus 2 zeta r bracket square upon 1 minus r square whole bracket square plus 2 zeta r whole bracket square raised to 1 by 2 and this ratio of f t by k y is called as force transmissibility and here which is very much important to note that the transmitted force is always in phase with the motion of the mass. So, the transmissibility uh, graphs are shown here that is onto the x axis we are having omega by omega n and onto the y axis we are having f t by k y. So, when the omega by omega n is equal to 0, the transmissibility is equal to 0. So, there is no force transmitted to the ground. As the value becomes 1, the force transmitted becomes infinite. To limit the amplitude of transmissibility, you have to increase the damping. As it becomes root 2, the force transmitted becomes twice the value of the initial value. And as omega by omega n is greater than root 2, the zeta value is proportional to the transmissibility as we have seen earlier. So, with this we can 
uh, stop here. Thank you.